Hello, and thank you so much for joining us for Unidos, a Hispanic Heritage Month special. I'm Maranjali Lopez. I'm Jose Alonso. I'm Lydia Herrera. And I'm Jesus Martinez. All month long, we've been out in the community working to get stories that reflect the growing Hispanic and Latino population right here in East Texas. We've been to many events like the Hispanic Heritage Gala and the Rose City Fiesta, which kicked off the month long of celebrations here in East Texas. We also dive deep into issues that matter most to you, like immigration and healthcare accessibility in East Texas. But before we get to that, we have to acknowledge this bit of information. For the first time in the state's history, Hispanic people officially make up the largest demographic in the state of Texas. That's according to the latest census data. And here in East Texas, that's evident through a surge in Hispanic-owned businesses and a growing, diverse Latino community. Check it out. It's official. For the first time, the Hispanic community is uh, uh, surpassing the white non-Hispanic community. According to the latest census data, Hispanic and Latino Americans outnumbered white residents and now make up the biggest share of the Texas population. New figures show Hispanic Texans made up 40.2 percent, while the non-Hispanic white Texas population made up 39.8 percent, and African Americans making up 12.1 percent of the overall population. It's one in five. One in five persons everywhere that you see uh, are Hispanic. That's, that is, at this point, is, is significant. Manuel Reyes is a senior business analyst at the Hibs Institute at UT Tyler. And he pays very close attention to statistics and demographic data within East Texas. And it's, it's growing. Uh, it has been growing for the past 10 years. If you pay attention to all the new businesses in town, you'll notice a trend. Hispanics are taking an important role in the economy, in the Texas economy, of course, and in this case, in East Texas and Tyler. We have more and more people that are, are taking over uh, important uh, positions in companies, organizations, government everywhere. In Tyler, new Hispanic-owned businesses opening up, more Spanish-language places to practice faith, festivals that celebrate culture, and leaders like Nancy Rangel taking active roles to help community members thrive. And we as the Hispanic Business Alliance, we work very closely with the city of Tyler, with the county, with the Chamber of Commerce to really um, serve as that uh, hub location for Hispanic endeavors. And those endeavors and business ventures are pouring money back into the local economy. Like we specifically work a lot with business owners and entrepreneurs, and we see a lot of business growth, a lot of individuals that start up businesses. We've seen a, a high number of percentage growth there as well. Uh, people that are contributing back to our economy, that are making an impact, that are making a difference, that are um, pumping in uh, millions of dollars into our local economy. Sounds like cause for a party. Rose City Fiesta kicks off Hispanic Heritage Month in Tyler and showcases culture and diversity. It's just a nice time for all of us to go out and celebrate and just have an, an enjoyable moment of Hispanic and Latino culture. And for the second time in East Texas history, a unique festival organized by a group of women from Central and South America. Andina Fest is a celebration of culture. Culture business success and opportunity, a Hispanic community thriving in East Texas. Well, many of those living in East Texas are many DACA recipients. Just last month, a federal judge in Texas deemed the program illegal, but he also didn't end it. Those currently enrolled in the program are able to renew, but any new applicants are not able to apply. We've been in the you know limbo. We don't know what's next. Owner of Cup of Joy Tea House in Tyler, Blanca Villanueva, is a DACA recipient. She's a dreamer like so many others living in East Texas and says she'd like to see a permanent solution from Congress. Advocates like Gilbert Urbina from the Hispanic American Center for East Texas are hoping for some change in the near future. He says because no new applications are accepted, this will impact many young students that are set to graduate in 2024. 
What I like about DACA is I get to see the people that are benefiting from them. We have registered nurses, certified teachers. We have linemen that protect us whenever there are storms. These are individuals that are professionals that are already integrated into our community and are servicing are the needs of the entire community. He says it's up to our elected officials in Congress to make a change. We reached out to Congressman Nathaniel Moran for comment on the story, but at the time of publication, we still have not heard back. Another important topic among the Hispanic community is access to health care. And there's a clinic here in town that's making sure they can help provide care for everyone, regardless of cost. Jose Alonso is here to tell us more. Jose? That's right, Mara. A local health clinic is taking the initiative to make sure everyone can have access to affordable health care. But what's unique about this faith-based organization is that they ensure they're able to communicate with Spanish-speaking patients. But as the health clinic says, all you need is proof that you work and earn a wage in order for them to provide you with medical care. This can be beneficial, especially for Spanish-speaking residents who need to see a doctor about something as common as catching the flu. Since they began offering this service 20 years ago, they've been seeing multiple East Texas patients as well as others from out of the area. I spoke with the specialty coordinator of the clinic, Rebecca Olivares, about why a large portion of their clientele happened to identify as Hispanic. You know, we do have a lot of uh, Spanish patients here, and some of them uh, are starting to go to school to learn a little bit of the language, but when they come here or they're around somebody who speaks English, they get embarrassed. So um, I do a lot of translating for my specialists that come here to the clinic, uh, but it's, it really is important to be able to speak both languages. What's also unique about this clinic is that if it wouldn't be here without the help of multiple congregations who don't just donate money, but also their time as professional physicians. And even if there are no one there to speak Spanish, they use an artificial intelligence device that helps employees communicate with their patients. Look at that advancement in technology. Jose, thank you. Well, when it comes to security, there are people stepping up to make sure that the language barrier no longer exists. Jesus Martinez joins us now with how one police officer is making a huge difference. Hey, Mara. Yeah, well, over the years, the language barrier between police and the Spanish-speaking community in Tyler has been a challenge, one that's been tough to overcome. I spoke to a community officer who says her one mission is to give people like her someone they can look up to, and she's representing a lot of firsts for the city of Tyler. Oh, it's, it's beautiful. I think as a Hispanic community, we're growing. A growing Hispanic community that is reflective of the Tyler police force in the community. Bianca Smedley is paving the road for Hispanic outreach for the Tyler PD in the Rose City. And that excites me, especially because I grew up here uh, in the Northeast. Growing up in a Hispanic neighborhood, Officer Smedley is wanting to make change in her own community. Just this spring, they created Comunidad a neighborhood crime watch for Spanish-speaking residents. You know, we knew that maybe the reason why they weren't attending our meetings or crime watch meetings was because of the language barrier. We didn't want anyone to feel intimidated. We wanted to feel welcoming. Officer Smedley is also a mentor for the department's cadet program. Within the last 10 years, the number of Hispanic officers has tripled. She's also seen an increase in the young Hispanic community join the cadet program. I think that's that's awesome because, like I said, any child wants to see a, their superhero, right, sometimes look like them. So if law enforcement is in their heart and they want to do that, I can mentor them or guide them. Growing up, Officer Smedley didn't have someone like her to look up to, which is why she's answering the call to be that role model for the younger generation of aspiring officers by being out in the community. Recently, Officer Smedley helped organize Tyler PD's first Hispanic-oriented national night out. With music, we dance in our specific culture. This event offered an abundance of resources for the Hispanic community that lives in the same neighborhood where Officer Smedley grew up in. And, and it's amazing to see how the community came together to make this happen. For Raquel Rodriguez and her daughter Alyssa, they say it's a step in the right direction to bridge the gap of fear between the Hispanic community and law enforcement. With all the Hispanic community seeing that they're here, they're present, they're visible, that they are, are willing to step up and be present with us. Alyssa is in the cadet program, the same one Officer Smedley mentors. It's not me out there all by myself, that there's more people out there and that I can look up to. When it comes to 
building relaciones or relationships between the Hispanic community and law enforcement, the building blocks for that go beyond just eventos en la comunidad or community events. Yo soy maestra de español. ¿Y tú? Hola, mi nombre es Elliot Patterson. Soy oficial de policía en Tyler. ¿Cómo puedo ayudarte? ¿Qué pasó? This is Paulina Pedrosa, Can you read number two? a community leader who was invited to teach this group of officers intermediate Spanish. Uh, we're all going to do verb conjugates. Woohoo! They're going to love that tomorrow. As part of Officers Medley's class, here officers learn Spanish to earn their certification for the Texas Commission of Law Enforcement. If they listen to the police officers that are speaking Spanish, that breaks the ice. With officers learning Spanish, Pedrosa says it's more than just learning the language and breaking the ice. It's about knowing the culture as well. By knowing our traditions, by knowing uh, what is important for us, that will help the case to be solved faster and in an easier way. So it's great. Um, they get to learn Spanish and they get to learn who lives in their city and the community leaders and what they're doing for the community as well. An effort that is being led by Officer Smedley and her colleagues to better enhance officer relations in the Hispanic community. And Tyler, Jesus Martinez, CBS 19. Awesome. Well, the next date for the Comunidad meeting has not yet been announced, but once we know, we'll make sure to update that information online. Bringing a new flavor to an East Texas town, why everyone is flocking to the great taste of Mr. Choodle. Under the Lights on CBS 19 is sponsored by Bill Dickinson Chevrolet. Hangers of Hope in Tyler is expanding with two locations and a third coming soon to South Broadway. The thrift store on a mission is the place to find great deals, unique items, and to support Bethesda Health Clinic. Clothing, books, furniture, appliances, dinnerware, and more. There's something different every single day. And if you have items you no longer need, come drop them off at the donation center at one of our stores and we'll handle the rest. We're on Loop 323, Troop Highway, and coming soon to South Broadway. Hangers of Hope, a thrift store on a mission. Spokespersons for Daniel Stark. At Daniel Stark, our remarkable team gets remarkable results. Here's what I mean. $438,916 to a car wreck victim for her neck and back injury. And $514,669 to another car wreck victim for injuries to his arm. That's money in their pocket. After a car wreck, results matter. So call us and find out what our team can do for you. Demand Daniel Stark. 1-800-483-8300. Hurry in. Right now when you buy a sausage egg and cheese McGriddles or a bacon egg and cheese McGriddles, you get the second one for just a buck. And pair it with an icy caramel frappe or hot premium roast coffee. I can't move. No one understands me. They're too busy to care. Why should I even bother? Hey, you feeling all right? Whether you know it or not, there's someone in your life who's there to listen and can understand what you're going through. We don't have to face hard times alone. So when you're ready, open up. Find out more about yourself and what you can turn to. Visit TurnToSupportsTX.org. Under the Lights on CBS 19 is sponsored by Bill Dickinson Chevrolet. We're putting a spotlight on a new coffee shop with a unique Mexican twist. They've been making a buzz in Longview with their sweet take on churros, a dessert that the owner and his family say comes deep from their roots. Located in North Longview is a new cafe named Mr. Churro, where they don't just sell lattes, but also sell, you guessed it, churros, a decadent Mexican pastry. It's, it's amazing to bring a product home from another home that, that people can taste just, you know, small piece of our culture. A small business started by Mexican native Luis Castanon, who saw the concept in his home city of Tampico, Tamalipas. 
Gai Sunan also owns a construction company and recently became a U.S. citizen about two years ago. Successful moments in his life, he says, aren't possible without his family. Hispanic families, man, we believe in, uh, we believe in sticking together. You know, if, if, if one has an idea, then we're back there supporting them and vice versa. With the help of his sister Genesis, they've also put a twist on their coffee to match their Mexican dessert. There's so many coffee shops here, so I wanted to be different and I also wanted to honor my background. So I decided that I was going to run an only Mexican-style coffee. So even if you get just like a basic Americano, which is just espresso and water, it's still made with Mexican beans. Mr. Churro has only been open for three weeks, but business has been booming. We've sold out a lot, and we, which is a good issue to have, obviously, and we didn't expect such a good turnout, and we didn't expect so many people to love it so much. So they're driving in from other cities, you know, Marshall, Kilgore, we have people from Tyler, uh, Henderson, so it's, it's not just the, the Hispanic, the Latinos that are coming out. It's everybody wants a piece of the churro, man. <laughs> Let's give it a try. I couldn't resist getting one. That was good. I have to say, I understand the hype. You know, Longview is very good about small business support, and when, it, when something small opens, mom and pops, man, people are there. Now those treats were very delicious, and Mr. Chudo says his main focus will still be on his construction company, but if the cafe continues to be a success, he hopes to expand possibly to Tyler. A continuación, we introduce you to una familia extrañamente normal who is making waves on social media. Meet Los Sagi right after the break. Under the Lights on CBS 19 is sponsored by Smith Dental Care. If you've been injured in a car wreck, that's why I'm here. I don't have multiple offices. I only need one. Hire me, and I will take care of your property damage pronto, and I will guide you through your medical treatment if you need it, and we will finish your claim prior to filing a lawsuit. Why do a lot of East Texans hire me? I'm one of you. I represent most people that only get hurt once. Here, call Keith Miller at 903-597-4090 for your free consultation. My feet hurt so bad in the morning, I couldn't even put my feet on the floor. So I had to start engineering my own arch support. So I got that, then I put this in there, this one. Finally, before I added another one of these in, I went to Good Feet, and they gave me this. So I built all this together to engineer a solution to my pain. And if I'd have just gone to Good Feet... I'd have been better off in the first place. Good Feet Art Supports, engineered for pain relief, personally fitted for you. A blessing's what it is to be able to see again and not have to wear those glasses. And yeah, well worth it. Brenda Griffin discusses cataract surgery at Lehman Eye Center. I thanked Dr. Anna for being so good with me and everything. And also, I thanked her dad and told him how good she is, and I just love her, and I would, you know, recommend her to anyone. Coming here was the best thing I could do. Get a shake with your points and some fries on the side with your points. You get more with every order. Woo! Get a water burger or a patty melt or some breakfast with the points. You get more with every order. Get a biscuit or a brownie, but no matter what you pick, you get more. Under the Lights on CBS 19 is sponsored by Bill Dickinson Chevrolet. This year, I got the chance to meet up with a family that is making waves in the local music scene. Marachi Los Corporales is a fifth generation family Marachi band that is making an impact in the East Texas community. They moved to the region about two years ago because of all the support they saw within the community. Lead singer and guitarist Adrian Torres says performing with his family is special. It means the world to me. The world, because um, at the end of the day, the people who are there for you, care for you, and your ups and your downs are your family. So to have this huge, this legacy that my father has built, and still playing with my family members is an honor. It's the best thing ever. It's the best thing that anyone could experience. Any artist should, could experience. 
Torres says this is just a start for Marachi Los Corporales. They have plans to record music, learn how to perform on horses, and so much more. Their full story is up online on our website, cbs19.tv. A Colombian family is connecting with hundreds of thousands of people across the world through social media. I got the chance to speak to Los Sagi at their home in Tyler, and they tell me they are just trying to show the world a snapshot of a life in a typical Latin household. Hugo Salamanca y Natalia Geraldo and their two children, Isabella and Matias, give an inside look at what life is like as an Hispanic family in the U.S. Hundreds of thousands of YouTube subscribers now know them as Los Sagi. We want to show that our family has values and principles. On their channel, you'll find the good times, family outings, jokes, and laughs. And then, there's the difficult moments family go through, too. I think the channel is very human. We show that not every day is like red roses, like how we say in Latin America, which means there are days that are happy and others that are not. Hugo and Natalia say they strive to be authentic every day, an example of life in a Latin household. We show that we also face difficult days that happens to everyone, but we want you to know that you are not alone. Their videos are in Spanish for a Spanish speaking audience. ¿Qué estás haciendo? Lo de siempre, lavando ropa. We came to Tyler seven years ago and it's beautiful, but we also suffered a lot. We represent families that move to the U.S. and when they see our videos, they can say, there's someone like me, someone who's living what I'm living. And I think that's very relevant. Three years ago, their journey started as a podcast, an effort to get closer to their teenage daughter. We thought, how are we going to improve our communication with her? So we decided to start a podcast, and even if no one watches us, as a family, we enjoy this time together. After time, we included Matias. And today, they're closer than ever. Just as Isabella. My parents always inspire and encourage me to create videos because at times I get shy. Una familia extrañamente normal. This is their motto and mission. They're a strangely normal family. As a family, we hope that families are able to be genuine and human and that they listen and spend time with each other and be present. You can find a link to their YouTube page by clicking on their, this story on our website, cbs19.tv. Well, still ahead, we're going to take a look at events happening this month as the community continues to celebrate culture in East Texas. Don't go anywhere. We also have a very special announcement just after this break. Seriously injured? Call Monsoor Law, 999-9999. No matter where you are in East Texas, Benjamin Franklin Plumbing is there. Our professional team of service technicians is on the road, and we'll be on time or we'll pay you. Our on-time guarantee is backed by highly skilled plumbers, and we're all over East Texas taking care of your plumbing needs. We treat our customers like neighbors because you are our neighbors. So wherever you are in East Texas, call Benjamin Franklin Plumbing today. All roads lead to Wood County for the Winsboro Autumn Trails Festival. There's something for everyone to fall in love with. All the terrific events every weekend in October. The fun includes arts and craft fair, trade stays, a large antique vehicle parade, and a classic car show. And contests from hot pepper eating to hot sauce making, pie and cake baking, beards and mustaches and pets, and so much more. Visit WinsboroAutumnTrails.com for details. There's something for everyone. We hope to see you there. Hurry in for great deals while they last on model year 22 and 23 equipment with United Ag and Turf's year end closeout sale. Zero dollars down and zero percent financing for 84 months is available on any new John Deere compact tractor. Need more than a tractor? We have an extensive range of tractor packages, all configured for different tasks and needs. See the complete lineup of deals on tractors, mowers, utility vehicles, and more at unitedagandturf.com. It's time to buy during the year end closeout sale at United Ag and Turf. 
The new 2023 GMC Sierra AT4X is equipped to conquer the great outdoors or the great indoors. Welcome to the peak of premium off-roading. Or get 4,500 purchase cash on 2023 Sierra Elevation 5.3 liter V8 light duty models. See your East Texas GMC dealer. Cables Roofing, serving East Texas since 1999. Call today to schedule a free roof inspection or estimate. Our professional office staff, estimators, and crews are prepared to handle your project large or small. If you want the best price and value in town, call Cables. More than 20% of Texas children waiting to be adopted are 13 years or older, but they make up less than 10% of actual adoptions. Texas needs loving homes for older youth. The moment I laid my eyes on these girls, I knew they was the one. We probably would have been split up, especially because like our ages. So I'm like really grateful that like she was there. Visit Buckner.org to learn more about opening your home to an older youth through foster care or adoption. Use the Near Me feature to share and find stories making news across East Texas. Get started by downloading the CBS 19 app. Before we go, we want to share some events that are happening very soon. Those marching in the Hispanic Heritage Float for the Rose Parade met in downtown Tyler earlier this week. Decked out with their native flags, community members practiced the flag movements and got ready ahead of the big event later this month. This is the second year there will be Latino and Hispanic representation at the Rose Parade. It's something organizer Nuri Burnett says is a cause for celebration. I can see in their faces that they're so proud uh, to represent their countries. As you said, historically, we, we haven't had that uh, opportunity, and we don't take it um, for granted. The Hispanic Heritage Float and the Rose Parade is being organized by members of the Monarca Initiative. It's a new nonprofit that helps migrants get connected to resources in East Texas. The Rose Parade will kick off right at 9 a.m. Saturday, October 21st. Be sure to come out and say hi. Lydia and I will be there dressed in our native outfits and marching in the parade. And next month, the Dia de los Muertos celebration returns to Longview. This is a day to remember and honor loved ones who have passed away. The Dia de los Muertos parade and festival will be on Saturday, November 4th from 4 to 8 p.m. at the Heritage Plaza in downtown Longview. And I have an exciting announcement to all my friends watching. I want you to know that I listen to each and every one of you. And because of you, I've decided to stay in East Texas longer. Part of my reason why I wanted to stay is because I want to continue to connect and provide resources that are much needed to the Hispanic community. And that's why starting this month, we'll be airing a weekly digital Spanish show to inform the Spanish speaking community of the news that matters to you. So please continue to connect with us via email and social media and we'll continue to tell stories that matter all year round y completamente en español. Y empezamos con este especial va a estar online en cbs19.tv en español pronto. Por favor, vayan a verlo online y denle muchos likes y shares. It's been a pleasure hanging out with you all this morning and sharing all that's happening in East Texas. And thank you for letting us share your stories and allowing us to be a part of this community. We are thankful to each and every one of you who choose to watch and engage with us. We couldn't do this without you, so thank you for watching this year's special. Nos vemos pronto. Adios.